Hello and welcome to another video and podcast from Fancy Football Scouts. Today it's all about Sky Sports Fancy Football. There is £50,000 up for grabs for the winner. My name is Joe and joining me ahead of Game Week 28 fixtures is Luke. Luke, how are you? Yeah, not bad, Joe. Not uh, not bad at all. Um, bit of a bit of a fire sale on Man City assets yeah. for me over the over the weekend, yeah, which I'm sure it was for yeah, it was for you and, and for many. So um, yeah, didn't didn't quite net as many points as I hoped it would, but yeah. um, hopefully set up now for a, yeah. for a quite a while um, as long as we can avoid some injuries. I yeah. know. I, I, in the, my mind, I I hadn't really planned to really jettison those City players, but then I just the more I looked to the fixtures and the lack of their fixtures and. The good assets coming up and of course we had some um news about some future fixtures as well i just sort of made sense it felt a bit weird getting rid of good solid assets like john stones and cancelo but you know hey ho <laughs> my mind wasn't far off of that actually i think a lot of players had planned this like quite well and i had looked at it slightly but because i had less transfers i was like i'm just going to ride it out but then when you actually see it in the cold light of day that man city have yeah. got you know, much fewer games, and then obviously all the talk is rotation. Then you think out of those fewer games, are they going to play like, you know, 70% of them? So really, we just have to hope that they don't manage to outscore the players we've bought in in those few games, which, as you've just said, with Man City, it's always possible. So it, it doesn't feel right to remove the best players from the best team in the game. But yeah. um but logically, on paper, it does it does make some sense. So let's uh, let's see if it works. <laughs> okay. Well, let's um, before we have a look at our teams and <clears throat> what that fire sale has done, and also the coming fixtures and captains and your community questions, have a look at the latest tier two and man of the match stars. Um, so we've got Shaw, Target, Kante, McNeil, Smith Rowe, Welbeck, Ian Acho. So I mean, all <laughs> hugely low owned players. And two I mentioned here. Um, uh, Jota, who I am very keen on, um, and I got in in my B team, but we're not we're not some interested in B teams. But um, pointing out, uh, I pointed out on social media that he's still in his wolf shirt, according to Sky. So really up to date there. So uh, some might be some might be thinking they're getting a, a wolves asset in if they're a bit behind the times. Um, <laughs> and the other man of the match I want to mention is Bernardo Silva, um, whose mum appears to have done this. So we've had Romeo's mum. Uh, doing the man of the match and Bernardo Silva's mum has been at it there so um, I don't know how that happened I did I did notice that he'd done a couple of good runs <laughs> a couple of good dribbles on the match of the day highlights but um, I mean it, I mean this seems like a good point to talk about it we have spoken about it before they just need to scrap these man of the matches yeah. it's it just brings disrepute into it um I mean, I'll be honest, I thought Bernardo Silva was great in the game. I thought he was really, really good. Yeah. Um, but he was one of a number of people who were good. And um, he got subbed off in the 67th minute. So, you know, he didn't play in the, in the last 20 minutes or so. And, um, you know, on all, on all these sort of who scored, fought mob, all these, all these rating sites, he was one of the lower rated players yeah. overall. Fair enough. I mean, that we're not basing it on stats. So, OK, fair enough. You know, you've chosen him because you thought he was good. But the really annoying thing was, is the reporter has literally written in the report, the reason he's given it to him, or part of the reason, was because he set up the goal from the free kick and he for didn't. Stones. But he didn't. No, it was Cancelo. So <laughs> I appreciate, and, and you're a journalist, obviously, Joe, and, 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 and you write things and articles. And um, obviously, if he's writing it, trying to get it out for when the game yeah. finishes or within the last 10 minutes, you have to question how much they're actually looking at the screen because they're probably typing, looking up, typing. It's just got the wrong um, player. Or yeah, so I mean, it's just it's just really, really bad, isn't it? Because, you know, if he hadn't have mentioned that was part of the reason why he gave him for Man of the Match, you could almost shrug your shoulders and go, oh, OK, mm. fair enough. I mean, I wouldn't have picked him, but it's not the worst award we've ever had. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he was half decent. But, um, yeah, it just brings it into disrepute. Yeah. I think, because I, I, obviously when we're... I've been involved in Sky for a long time. And um, the thing with Sky is they have a different person in charge quite often. They sort of have like one or two years and then they generally move them on to other areas. So it's kind of, um, it's good because you kind of build up a relationship and what, what the community wants, what we're looking for the game. You might have even assisted them with various things. Um, and you sort of work out the relationship and then suddenly they're gone and it's a new person and you yeah. have to work that all again. So it's kind of frustrating. So the last person that was in charge was very keen on changing the man of the match Ooh. to um, using a FOP mob or who scored or whatever site and just basing on ratings at least they can brush yeah. the shoulder and go look that's that's yeah. who gave it we can't really argue then you know i might not like it that way but that's what he was keen to do 
However, um, there's a new person now, so whether they'll follow that up or not, well, or whether they'll completely I mean, scrap it. <laughs> I mean, what a way. I mean, if you're, I mean, yeah, as a, as a journalist, um, if you make a mistake, you you know, most things are online these days, so you can correct them and then you you, you, you note you've made a mistake and, and, and move on and admit to it. Um, but for this reporter to make that mistake of, of muddling up two prominent players... And then compounding it by basing another decision on a fantasy game where there are lots of very, very engaged managers. Uh, you mm. cannot breathe in the sky without a whole community wanting to know what is happening. <laughs> Why are you breathing in that way? And did you breathe? And will that mm. will that breath get a man of the match? Um, so it's really, it's, it's, yeah, as you said, I mean, you can't add any more. It's... Um, it's no. a sorry state of affairs. Let's hope whoever is in charge of the Sky game at the moment addresses that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not suggesting they're doing this, but the, the way it is at the moment, it is open to abuse. The, mm. end of the, day, the man of the match person is just like a... They don't even necessarily work for Sky. They just do articles for for them, yeah. um, if you know what I mean. They're contracted, so to speak, or whatever. And um, there's nothing to say. Maybe he's my mate. I can ring him up and go, make sure Bernardo Silva gets the man of the match. Yeah, no, I'm not suggesting they are no, doing it, but you don't know if they are or not. So no, it's open to... No it's transparency. Open to exactly. They, they used to have it in Fantasy Premier League. Um, who was... There was a guy at Birmingham who got Matt, who got the three bonus points. Charlie, no, oh, um, Ferguson. Yeah, Barry Ferguson. Was it Barry yeah. Ferguson? Yeah, Barry... Um, yeah, he used to get bonus points just for turning up every yeah. single week. Yeah, yeah. And, and he'd get three points every match just for turning up. And you just go, why is this happening? Every, I mean, I know it's only Birmingham, but for God's sake, <laughs> there surely yeah. must be someone better in this match every match. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, I think it transpired that Barry Ferguson's mum was in charge of that. So, <laughs> and got, Charlie Adams' mum took she, over. Someone, yeah, so yeah, she got her. sacked. Charlie Adams' mum took over. And now we've got Bernardo Silva's mum in the sky. Let's move on. Passing tier two. Shaw, Evans, Wambasaka, Sionchu, uh, Fafana, Fred and Tiemans. What's interesting about this is there are some nice alternatives um, for Manchester United, but some Leicester assets. Leicester have good fixtures coming up towards the end, and, and not a lot of Leicester assets in people's teams. Those that have have been doing well recently. Um, so yeah, in one of my B teams, I've got Tiemans. I'm really enjoying having him because he's getting he's getting as we see passing yeah. tier two, and he's got a goal in him. Sionchu yeah. is interesting as well. Yeah, Tielemans has looked really good in, in recent weeks. This is what Leicester do, though, isn't it? They look great, and then they suddenly look awful. I think people did target them, and then the main guys got injured in Madison and Barnes, and that was that was part of the problem. I bought Barnes in, and he got injured straight away, so that was annoying. But um, I did, for a long time, actually, before the Sheffield United game, way up getting either Soyuncu and Fafana in, because I thought it's probably a 10-pointer, um, which it turned out to be for both of them, I think. But for me, I wasn't sure. They're playing a back three at the moment with Evans, Soyuncu and Fafana. And we all know that they can switch to a back four. Now, because of those injuries they've got, maybe they won't. Uh, maybe I over overthought it. Um, but I didn't know who to target out of those three. Because if they do switch to the back four, who is it that drops out? Fafana's been excellent for most of the season. But, but Soyuncu was injured. Mm -hmm. And he was clearly first choice um, in, in the previous season. You know, And Evans is is their sort of stalwart, who I, I think probably is, is now... Um, the worst one out of the out of the three, but I don't think that Brendan Rodgers necessarily sees it that way. No. Um, so, so it was a little bit of guesswork. It's like you know, if it changes, I could suddenly have a player who's not playing in my team. So I didn't want to risk it. But as if it continues as it is, um, and there's not much, much time to actually correct it, I might have to go there because yeah. these passing centre backs. You know, I'm a massive fan, and these guys yeah. look the next, along with Chelsea. These guys look like the the next ones to replace our City defenders, really. Yeah, definitely. Um, tackles tier two, Cancelo. Um, goodbye, Cancelo. Um, Tierney, Lalana, Hayden, Neves, Rodri, and Anguissa were some of those I picked out there. So not not much going on. Um, um, saves tier two, Debravka, Allison, Meslier, and Ramsdale. Debravka's still there. He was he was the top save merchant last yeah. um, last year. So. He got something like 60 points from saves last year. Yeah, Newcastle do have good fixtures. And I say that, I mean, that Newcastle are bad, but sometimes that save Meister in a team which could get the odd clean sheet um, could be, you know, an interesting differential. Well, it's right. like Meslier, who's also in that list. Alisson, Meslier, Ramsdale mm. are also there. And Meslier, who I got rid of at overhaul, has pretty much got saves tier two every week since, yeah. I think. Yeah. So 
um, you know, might be close to, to, to my keeper in the end. <laughs> um, not not many in shots tier two. Um, Vardy and Iheanacho. So you know, there's there's your lesser options again, and Havertz as well. So I'm still monitoring Ooh. him. Um, interesting, very interesting, Havertz. So if he's not only get got a goal in him, playing as a number nine potentially, mm. and he's getting the shots tier along with that, you know, what would come with that number nine role. Um, interesting lots of interesting assets um the other one i'm particularly interested in jota um and i am i'm weighing up a move of getting rid of salah for him and it frees up some money i'm the thing with salah is your te- on a day when he's um a captaincy option you tempted to captain him if there's no fernandez for example around that day and it's it's basically two points <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sick of that. Um, and it's, it's a way of just taking that temptation away. We don't have a Van Dyke anymore. Um, I'm tempted by Jota in my main team. Um, let's have a look at some fixtures were announced. So let's have a look at them um, before we have a look at our teams. And I've I've gone to the FPL site. So apologies, Sky managers, for offending you for having the FPL site. But Sky have not yet put the updated fixtures up. So um, I remember last time they did this and I got into terrible muddle with them trying to, trying to piece them together from the sky. So I, I, I'm just going to FPL now. So, so luckily the fixtures are aligned. So these are for game week 30 and 31. It's early April. Mm. And these show that the some of the single, well, one single match day and some of the limited days. So the first on, on the game week 30 on Saturday, we got Chelsea and West Brom. Leeds, Sheffield United, Leicester, Man City, uh, Villa, Fulham. So some 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 nice options there, and it compounds the need for me personally to get a Chelsea asset in. Um, and then moving on to the Sunday, Southampton, Burnley, Newcastle, Spurs. So obviously Kane uh, is looking good that day. Arsenal, Liverpool. This is why I'm um, so after a blank fixture for, for Salah he comes straight into that and I don't know I don't know whether what he will do and I don't want to captain him that day because Fernandes is playing Brighton at home I want to captain him that day so Salah off you go um, and then on the Monday Everton against Palace and Wolves against West Ham and, and as we'll see with our teams both you and I have got in uh, a Wolves and West Ham player so um, with this in mind I presume <laughs> Um, and then moving on to game week 31 we got Fulham and Wolves hence a Wolves player coming in and then we got City against Leeds um, uh, so I'll be looking at and it's the first match as well so I'll captain my, my City player that's left that day <laughs> um, Liverpool against Villa um, this is where Jota might come in for me Palace against Chelsea hopefully I've got Aspilicueta in and then moving down Burnley Newcastle on the Sunday <clears throat> West Ham Leicester um, Spurs against Manchester United and Sheffield United against Arsenal. That's that's quite a tricky day, that one. Um, yeah. What do you think for a called captaincy that day? I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's really tough, isn't it? I mean, <coughs> as we just saw uh, Leicester versus Sheffield United and they absolutely smashed yeah. them and they've just lost their manager. Um, I mean, the Arsenal asset is clearly the best one on that yeah. day for me. I mean, Aubameyang, we're not sure 100% who plays, but I think it is probably likely you would. So I mean, I, I if I had the option, uh, that is a day to to make up some ground there because yeah. players, people like me, are not going to bring in an Arsenal people no. who don't have enough transfers. No. I know they've got good fixtures, so you could look at it, but it's it feels a little bit vanity, and then you're yeah. kind of trusting him to play every week. Where I suppose it's not that much of a problem when you're comparing him to the likes of Salah, who are doing absolutely mm. nothing. But um, obviously, there are other players that are doing pretty good. You know. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think that's a that's a day for where if you go for a Bamiyang, you could you could be heavily rewarded on that day. For me, I mean, I'll have um, Bruno Fernandes and Kane. They're playing yeah. each other, so maybe one of those. I've got Antonio at home to Leicester. Leicester can be a good side though, so mm. it'll probably default to Kane just because um, or, yeah. or Bruno um, yeah. just because they're obviously great assets. And I hope you know it's, it's hard to predict result, but you'd expect that both of them would get maybe some bonus points at least out of that. So. Yeah, the other the other point with Arsenal is they're broiled in Europa League action. Yeah. Um, well, currently are. Um, so there could be there could be rotation, especially with the likes of Aubameyang, who you know, despite his tardiness for training, he's still the, you know the first choice striker there. Um, yeah. Saka's fitness one to monitor. But once again, I I'm not sure any 
Arsenal player is guaranteed minutes in what on the face of it is probably their easiest game in a clutch of games so yeah. this is the game you want to rotate I would imagine the thing is it's like on the, on that weekend so you just mentioned on Saturday the 10th of April let's say you sat with salary and team like quite a yeah. lot of us are they're, they're at home to Villa on the Saturday now you could move to a Bamiang for that game against Sheffield United um, assuming he plays yeah. and that's the risk isn't it 7 o'clock after all the games mm-hmm. And then I know we don't have the fixtures for the rest of the games, but if you look down them, Arsenal are then home to Fulham, mm. they're home to Everton, yeah. then they're away to Newcastle, home to West Brom. You know, that's a nice little run, isn't it? And then it goes to Chelsea and then they've got Palace and Brighton. So Chelsea's probably the only tough game they've got left out of that that run. Um, so a move from Salah to Aubameyang at that point could be pretty good. The problem is Salah has also got good games from that yeah. point on. So Yeah, but well, this um, is why I want to... Wanna you know, cut my ties with Salah <laughs> um, because I'm, I'm. what's happened so far, those who've got rid of Salah in whatever fancy format, including Sky, and moved on to another player from another team or, or another Liverpool asset, um, you know, they reap the rewards um, because you're always, you're, you're often tempted to captain Salah and, you know, he doesn't, and, he, and he's not delivering. Um, you know, that might turn. But meanwhile, you might be able to use that money elsewhere. And with the likes of Leicester and Chelsea defenders as well, you're probably going to need a bit of money, I think, coming up soon. And I'm, I'm, Salah's just not justifying his price tag. Um, let's move on to that Monday. West uh, Brom against Southampton and Brighton against Everton. So for me, I'm probably going to be keeping older Calvert-Lewin. He's got an extra fixture as well coming up at some point. Um, yeah, Calvert-Lewin for me. Looks good. Yeah. Um, and I would imagine... So those that are thinking of getting rid of Calvert-Lewin, maybe looking at these fixtures, you might want to hang on to him. Um, for that. Both of these Mondays, he's a great option. Um, yeah, that's what I'll be doing. I'll be holding on yeah. to him because of those reasons. It does annoy me when this happens, though, that you've, all, you've got in your mind that you can't... I mean, I didn't necessarily want to get rid of Calvert-Lewin, but a lot of people might have. You, know, you want to get rid of a player and then the fixtures come out and then you end up holding on to a player... Yeah. because he's got these single days. So Salah was a perfect example recently playing Wolves. Continuously held on to him myself because he's got the single match there. It makes no sense to remove him. And then it, he continues to get two for ages where if he'd have moved to anyone, even who hasn't got a single match day, you would have um, yeah. you would have benefited. So um, I, the thing is, I don't think you can change that approach because one goal for Salah on that day as, as captain and suddenly you've, you've you know, it was the right move to make and you don't want to make yeah. the swap. So I think we're just going to have to keep Calvert-Lewin and just hope yeah. that he he starts returning um, but I wouldn't be surprised if someone else scores him so if you if you want to take the punt and then on the day um, I mean West Brom are playing Southampton on that day you could obviously just look at the lineups and bring in your favourite Southampton asset I mean it depends yeah. how many transfers you've got left but I think that's still not <clears throat> yeah definitely so um, let's have a look at our teams because they're a bit different from last week so let's have a look at your team first so you've got Martinez in goal Aspilicueta Stones and Diaz so much less City now Antonio Neto Rafina and Fernandez in midfield. Probably not a midfield you perhaps thought you were going to have at the beginning of the season. Um, <laughs> Kane, Calvert-Lewin and Salah. Um, once again, you're a step ahead of me because you're about, you're one player, you're a Rafina um, and an Aspilicueta um, more than I'm, they're the players I'm targeting next. I don't have them at the moment. But um so your transfer wise, you must be pretty low. I know you're not going to reveal oh, yes. exact the exact number, but it must be almost dangerously low. So yeah, I'm I'm taking a risk now because uh, obviously we don't have fixtures. Things can change, but I am definitely yeah. <laughs> at the point now where I'm not making any transfers unless I get some injuries uh, yeah. for a long time, which is frustrating because people will be able to catch me up. But it is what it is. Um, yeah, my, my my main thing that I had in my mind was that I wanted to get Thiago Silva in for either Calvert-Lewin or Salah at some point, um, just to double up on the Chelsea defence. But then he had a setback, and I don't really trust any of the others to A, play, or... I, I trust really good to play, only miss one, but he doesn't yeah. get passing bonus that often compared to the others, so I, yeah. I'm not really that interested. So that's probably the only sort of plan I've got in my mind, possibly the Aubameyang one I talked about, in for Calvert-Lewin or Salah at some point. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just have to hope Antonio's cheese string hamstrings last because that's also a worry yeah. um stones might not play a lot of the games but i feel like if he's going to play five of the games given given how he performs yeah. at the moment it won't make any difference he'll still somehow manage to get 100 points from those five games so yeah no looks good um and where bit are you in the rankings still sort of 
top 15. 20, no, not 21st mm -hmm. now. I've dropped down a bit. Let me have a look. Um, 28th. Okay. So still, you know, still in the running. So it's, a, as you said, time to take some risks. So here's my team, which is sort of almost where you're at, um, but not quite. So I took a, I mean, it. I thought, I just took a Hail Mary on getting Duncan. I just thought I saw that fixture, the single game day for Brighton. And I thought, well, I'm just going to go for that. And so I got rid of, I think it was Cancelo went for Dunk. And he ended up being my my best transfer I've done recently. So it got me nine yeah, points. scoring a goal, unbelievable. Scoring a goal. Um, so I've got Martin, now I've got Martinez, Dunk, Vestergaard, Diaz, Ward-Prowse, Antonio Neto, Fernandez. Kane, Calvert-Lewin and Salah. Um, my plan with this, so I have 11 transfers left, so I'm, I'm, I feel okay there. I, I've moved up a sort of sphere. I'm hovering around the five to 600 mark in the rankings when they're updated each day, rather than 900 or so that I was a while ago. So gradually making progress. Um, my, my plan moves are, even though Southampton's fixtures are good, I'm not sure I want Southampton players and I like Rafina's value compared to Ward Prowse. So I'm going to go for Rafina. Ward Prowse out for Rafina. That gives me a captain and it gives me arguably Leeds' best player um, for the duration, perhaps. Um, he's certainly cheap enough for that. Then my plan is to remove Vestergaard for Aspilicueto. Um, and that will leave me with nine left and 1.6 million in the bank after I've done that. And yeah, then that's I, a healthy position. And then I don't know. <laughs> and that's the position I want to be in. I sort of want to be in a don't know position. So I then I can cope with injuries. I will then have 11 teams covered, but I won't yeah. have any Leicester. And that's where I'd be looking to move Dunk on to a Leicester defender, perhaps. Yeah, so I'm sure for Fada. I say yeah. that's the one thing I missed out on my plan. That if Thiago yeah. Silva thing doesn't work, I'll probably be looking at one of those. I just want to see how it yeah. develops a little bit. But yeah, that, that's great. I think you're in a great position now. I would be very surprised if you don't start flying up the ranks because there's going to be people like me that yeah. know that there's good moves that they want yeah. to make and they're just not going to ignore them and yeah. pray. I mean, Dunk is one. I obviously Dunk was a good move this week. Um, I mean, it's it looks very likely that he's going to hit 10, 20 points. Yeah. Although um, against Newcastle, although they've dropped off on the passing stats because they've sort of switched to a back yeah. four recently, but it's Newcastle who are utterly dreadful for giving away passing bonus to the opponent, yeah. so I wouldn't be surprised. Well, it's also, if Dan Byrne is injured, they are more likely to go, well, they went, they went, they switched to three at the back with Pascal Gross, weirdly, at right wing back. Um, their, five, their very cheap striker um, at left wing back. I mean, basically, we don't know. Um, mm. But if it, if a dunk is is an surety to play, so we know where he'll play, and you know you've got to hope that there'll be some passing bonus there, and he's got a goal in him. Um, and Newcastle, like like a lot of the relegation threatened teams, are vulnerable to set pieces, which is where Dunk can mm -hmm. shine. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I feel I feel quite confident about that, and I'm I um, yeah Salah is. Well, I mean, he's hanging by a thread. I mean, he's. I, I would like to get rid of him to Jota. I think that will give me a slight advantage. I'm just going to bet that Salah's not going to be that great an asset, um, even though their fixtures are good. I just don't think he is quite the main man anymore um, as a fantasy asset. So, and then move on to that, really. Um, yeah, um, Leicester are the ones I want. So hover around. And I quite like the idea of having like 10, 11 from different teams. Um, and getting rid of City has, has, has done that, really. Um, let's have a look at um, game week 28. <clears throat> so it's quite little. <laughs> so we can put them all up on the screen. So there's, there's three three days, so three captaincy chances here. So we've got Fulham leads. you got Rafina. I'm going to get Rafina in. Fulham, though, could be interesting. Um, especially if you haven't got a Wolves asset because there's a single match day. Would you advocate anyone getting a Fulham asset in if they don't have Leeds or Wolves? I mean, that, that Adrabaya, who we've been talking about a lot at, at 5.2 million, is is the ultimate enabler. Mm. Um, he's, I mean, com compare him to Salah. He's about yeah. a third of the price, and I think he's probably outscored him by about triple points in the last yeah. 15 weeks. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, you could easily move to him. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. Leeds don't really give up passing bonus to anyone, um, so maybe he'll struggle for that. Mm. Um, but uh, he's just a good enabler season long. The only problem I would say is Fulham have, have got some dreadful games after that, so uh, I wouldn't be expecting to. Have they got dreadful games? I thought they did. Maybe I'm making that up. I'm clicking it through now. They certainly have a mixture. They don't have... Um, yeah, a way to be home to Wolves, that's fine. But then it's the little run after that, isn't it? I think they've got yeah. a bad run at some point. Um, they miss a game. Yeah. And then they play Chelsea away. Burnley at home. Well, that's not too bad. No, I seem to have made it up. For some reason, I thought they had a worse team than that. Uh, a worse fixture list than that. So, yeah, I mean, I, I like they, that. They miss a game, don't they? For the, But, I mean, in Sky terms, they don't miss a game. They just have a game yeah. postponed. So, yeah. just be aware of that. Um, so, moving on. Brighton, Newcastle. So, for me, it's Dunk. Um, you're going to skip that. Would you recommend it, uh, a Newcastle asset? <laughs> uh, no. I, I'd love to have Dunk. But if you were going to do it, I think it was probably better to do it the other week, um, which you got. Most people did and got yeah. the goal. Now I'd say for, unless you want him long term, if you want him long term from now on, and you you think he's a good asset because he is a decent asset, um, then by all means go for it. Mm. Um, but if you're literally bringing him in to captain him versus Newcastle and then looking to ship him out afterwards, yeah. I wouldn't risk one one game like that. I mean, it's is likely to be a twenty pointer, but it could quite easily not be, and then suddenly you'd be cursing your decision. So. Yeah, for me, I mean, obviously got got bright uh, Duncan for his goal. He's going to stick around for a while and then eventually move to 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 a Leicester defender, I think. Um, but um, and I think a lot of, a lot of people will probably do that. A lot of Dunk owners, but bear in mind that Brighton's run in whilst Dunk is good for the tears, and he has got a goal in him. Brighton's run in is pretty awful. <laughs> And there's a real risk of some hammerings there, <laughs> you know, a very, very real risk of a hammering, and you, um, you could end up with minus. So if you're banking on him for a future captain, you know, a bit scary, that fall. Um, Sunday, twenty first of March, West Ham, Arsenal, Villa, Tottenham. So this is a bit more like it. Um, well, Harry Kane for me, but you know, option of Antonio or Martinez if I fancied. Um, but for you. Yeah, it'd be Harry Kane. Yeah. I've got him in. I hope Sun's fit, to be honest, because from one one of those two seems to miss out. It doesn't. It's not quite the same, is it? And no. um, but it's just play safe on that day. I don't think this is a particular. This is a week where you can really make some moves. Nearly everyone who's engaged are in the top. Sort of, sort of one thousand will be on. I would imagine Rafinha or Dallas captain. Yeah. Maybe Bamford if he's there and, and he's fit. They'll be on Dunk or no one in the Saturday game, I would imagine. And then on Sunday, nearly everyone's going to be on Kane. The ones that are punting might go a Bamiyang, and that could work out for them. Yeah. But apart from that, they're basically the only names you need to worry about this week. I think everyone else looks like they're just going to pick up the odd two point and you just roll with whatever you've got. Definitely. Um, let's move on to some community questions then. So um, just having a look on our Twitter feed here. So Tom Hartnell asks, what to do about this Fulham Wolves game, uh, which is coming out the single match day that we spoke about earlier? Um, he's tempted to move uh, Vestergaard for Anderson for the captaincy. Is that worth it, do you reckon? Um, yeah, we spoke a bit about Wolves, but do you think that would be worth it if you're a Vestergaard owner and you've got no captain that day? I suppose it would if you've got no captain that day, but it's just the whole thing of getting a Fulham defender in against Leeds just always feels like it's a bit of a risk because firstly, they don't get the passing bonus very often and Leeds are generally pretty good in attack. I know it hasn't been that way of late as, as much, but they can suddenly, we've seen it quite a lot this season where people start to question Leeds and suddenly they put out a yeah. ridiculous performance and score yeah. three or four goals. Um, and Fulham are fighting for their lives. So they're going to have to keep pushing forward and keep going. They can't just, you know, sit, yeah. sit back. Um, it, it, it could work, but and Vestergaard and Southampton have been largely atrocious, but their fixture run is so good that I'm not sure switching a cheap defender for another cheap defender will will net you enough points no. for it to be worth a transfer. That's my only concern. Will we be better off using it, say, on an Aubameyang or a Vardy or a, um, a Thiago mm -hmm. Silva or a Soyuncu over the course of the next eight games? Probably yeah. For me, probably you will. Yeah. So um, I'd be tempted just to, to sit on Vestergaard. Um, Rather than yeah, I mean that's why I I mean I've, I'm a Vestergaard owner and I haven't once considered the move to Dallas or um, uh, to to a Fulham defender here because um, you know I want to use that slot for I'm, I'm I'm looking advanced in terms of Chelsea and Leicester defenders really and maybe any other defenders that emerge um, 
but yeah I, I i it's just not really worth it um no at this stage i think you can literally sit down write out the the, the amount of games left for your player so yeah. let's say best of guard write out the seven games and just write down a prediction what you think you'll get for each each yeah. week including your captains and then come up with a figure i don't know say 50 points yeah. whatever it might be and then you can do the same for your fulham defender write it out and then see how many you think he might get and if the gap is look is is only sort of 20 points in your mind then it's probably not worth it if it starts to get into the realms of 30 with only eight weeks then i'd, I'd look at doing it yeah. um obviously what what actually happens compared to what you've written down might be very different but um that that's what the game is isn't it predicting yeah. the points and, and hoping you get it so I, I would say yeah only only there's a substantial difference because a bamiang one cap one cap we haven't got the captain days is the main problem mm. and, and there could be several now towards the back yeah. end where suddenly you think well i need to have a bamiang for that day or i yeah. need to have a vardy for that day and um and yeah you've wasted it on a fulham transfer <laughs> um here's a question here from alex brown he's got two got two transfers left for the season okay that is quite low um mm. if you could only transfer two for the rest of the season who would it be so it's hard to judge this without knowing who, who he's already got um basically the two highest scorers from now to the end of the season i guess would be yeah would uh, but but also i think what he's I mean, I guess what this throws up is that let's assume he's already got Fernandes and Kane. So if you don't have Fernandes and Kane, just get them in because <laughs> you're going to want to captain them a lot and they're going to do well. Um, but if, you, but I guess it's others. Um, look at the fixtures. Who's got good fixtures? Liverpool have. Um, I would say if you've all, if you haven't got a Liverpool asset, Jota might be an intriguing one. I think. I don't know. What do you reckon? I think Aspilicueta would be top of my list. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he's close to the top scorer from now to the end of the mm -hmm. season, even though they've their last few games are quite tricky, if I remember. I think they've got Man City, Arsenal, yeah. Leicester in a little mm -hmm. block towards the end. Yeah, 35, 36, 37, they've got that. But they've got West Brom at home, Palace, Brighton, West Ham, Fulham in the next uh, five games. Um, obviously, they blank this week. In those five games, he could quite easily get... 10 points a game yeah. um, if not more because the thing with Aspilicueta is that he, he gets the tackles as well as the passing quite mm. often he hasn't he hasn't the last couple of games but he's got a, a history of doing it so he's almost like you know these Laportes and stuff who generally get the 10 point and Aspilicueta has also got that chance of getting yeah. a 12 or 14 yeah. point <laughs> yeah um, definitely he's, he's by far the best asset from Chelsea and Sky at the moment and yeah, I, yeah. yeah that's why he's my, my, my top target at the moment um, mm. uh Eric Klump asked for Brighton punts. Um, well, I mean, if you haven't, as you said, I mean, I, I guess it's, if you haven't got one, I wouldn't bother, to be honest. Their running's not great. Um, if you, They've just got one single day up, uh, match day. They might have a, a one or two more. Lewis Dunk or no one. If you are a risk taker, Trossard or Gross, might get you something but i doubt it compared to the others so yeah i'll probably just leave them <laughs> no gun gun to my head i'd probably pick truck i'd probably pick um gross but um yeah the only way i like trossard as a player i love watching him yeah. but you, i mean you only have to click on his name in sky and then go look at his last sort of 10 15 points mm. it, it reads basically like salah i mean i know yeah. he scored this week and got a shots tier but it's generally a two point or a one pointer for, for months on end yeah. despite him I mean, the problem in the past was Trossard wasn't even 100% nailed and that was, and we always thought he'd be a great asset once he was nailed. Turns out that's a load of rubbish. Generally, he's generally yeah. not that good of an asset, no. even if he plays, apparently. Um, so for me, it would simply be gross because yeah. he can occasionally get a tier bonus, yes. like passing or tackles, which he's actually pretty good at. Um, and then obviously he's on penalties, it seems. So, um, you know, you, you could you could get a, a jammy one there. But again, if you click him on and look through his past history, doesn't score enough points. No. No, it's not. It's, it's it's dunk or no one. I would say. Um, yeah. And I don't. I don't think. I don't think Brighton punts exist in Sky at the moment. You might get the odd goal. You might get the odd tier. But compared to the other players, Chelsea's, your Leicester's, you know, City, even, you know, you're just not gonna. You're just not gonna get there. Um, Leon Hobson asks uh, preferred Leeds coverage. Um, so well, I'm, I'm. You've already got Rafina. I'm going to get Rafina. I'm planning to just keep Rafina in there because he's cheap. Six six point eight, best Leeds player. Um, I I prefer to go that than a defender with Leeds because their fixtures aren't great. So mm. if they're gonna get a goal, I don't know. Is there anyone else apart from Rafina? 
I, I'm just going to say Rafinha. I think he's the best pick. Yeah. I think Dallas is more than capable of, of doing just as well. But um, I, I still think Rafinha is the best because midfielders aren't great in this game. And Rafinha is one of the ones that fills that slot perfectly. Whereas defenders are generally pretty good and Dallas uses a defender slot. So just on that basis alone, I prefer having Rafinha as a leads coverage because there's so few midfielders that I, I particularly want. Um, mm -hmm. It's getting a little bit better, um, but... There's still, I mean, I've got Antonio Neto and Rafinha in my team. There's, it's quite conceivable those guys get two points for the next three or four games yeah. all in a row. I mean, I'm prepared that it could happen. Um, it's not like the, I just love these passing centre backs that get this five even yeah. when they fail, and they're not those guys. So, no, um, what you're no I mean, on. it could be that Wolves, it could be that Cody becomes the best, better at, so it could be Bolly uh, becomes better than Neto. It could be that, um, Cresswell or Dawson outscore Antonio. Um, it could also be that Lingard is the one in the sky rather than... Yeah, uh, I think Antonio. a lot would have maybe moved to him if they didn't have uh, West Ham coverage. I mean, I, I was thinking about it, but obviously he didn't, he didn't play yeah. against Man United, so it didn't make any sense to get him in. I would just get that. And I, I, I genuinely think if, if Lingard's going to do well, West Ham will do well, and the guy up top will do well, and that'll be yeah. Antonio. So I just think, yeah. you know, get one in. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a bit weird of... Like suddenly, just suddenly gone for kind of quite flair midfielders who are bargains, whereas Sky's often been about just getting those Aspilaquetas, just get five Aspilaquetas in, and it has. But the actual real footballers mimic this. I think someone was saying that um, you know for, forwards this season. I think for the last sort of I don't know uh, two months or something, forwards have just been utterly dreadful yeah. in Sky and in, in FPL and yeah. everything you know, outside of Kane. There's, there's literally been hardly anyone who, who you can rely on. And then midfielders as well haven't been great. Someone, uh, I think it was um, uh, Pep Talk, was mm. saying something like, since game week 19, the highest score each week in FPL, which kind of translates to mm. Sky, has been a defender something like 11 times out of yeah. the last 19 weeks and midfielders have picked up the other five or something like that. Um, and, and in Sky, that's even heightened because you obviously get the passing bonus and stuff, which you don't get in in, yeah. in FPL. So I, I would argue that it's probably been a defender nearly every week in Sky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, but yes, we move on. We are we are we are where we are with Sky. It's an odd season. Let's get through it. You can win it. I can get in the top hundred. These well, are the aims. <laughs> well, I say you can win it. Can you? I don't think I can win Maybe. now. Too, I mean, the, the lead is 80 points clear of me. And over the last few weeks, I've kind of gone occasionally to about 50, 60 points. And then I've gone back to 100. Yeah. And then I've gone 50, and I'm now back at 80, which I was about two months okay. ago. So I can't make any ground on him. It's constantly 80 points, probably because he's got pretty much the exact same team as me, apart from maybe a couple yeah. of names. Okay. And obviously, he perhaps hasn't got his own video where you can watch and and you can understand what his moves are. Um, oh, I'm, I'm sure he's more concerned about the guys in the top five. But yeah, <laughs> no, it's doesn't, doesn't, not the best decision to just lay your cards yeah. on the table, is it? Uh, before we go, just mention the members area in Fantasy Football Scout, uh, full of useful stats and information for Sky managers and FPL managers alike. Um, if you have liked this video, um, do press like and also subscribe. That means you can um, keep up to date with all our latest videos and podcasts wherever you hear them um do check out the website for details uh, in the meantime luke thanks so much for your time and um good luck with your week in sky cheers joe see you on the next one mate